We've just hit the beaches of BMC's masterfully recreated Iwo Jima playset. Make no mistakes about it, the real life battle was no child's play. For five grueling weeks, United States Marines would fight like hell to secure the island and eventually conquer Mount Suribachi in what was one of the bloodiest battles during the war. The Japanese defenders weren't just on the island, they were inside it, with 16 miles worth of tunnels, part of which is represented here. This is BMC's adaptation of the original King & Country Toys set and pays homage to the incredible bravery of the US Marines and the unrelenting fighting spirit of the Japanese defenders, featuring Mount Suribachi with contested tunnels, barbed wire and sandbag defenses, as well as American vehicles, the Amtrak LVT and the M4 Sherman. Let's recon. Let me just say, this is one of the coolest sets that I've ever seen. When it comes to BMC's big box sets, their packaging conquers all others. No one else comes close. Details and images of its contents are featured on every side, and as always, a brief description of the battle it represents. Before we crack the lid on this thing, who wants to bet that there's going to be images on the inner flaps? I'd be willing to wager an original bucket of 1995 Toy Story Army Men. Here along the front flap, we see instructions on the sticker placements for the mountain and the vehicles. The side flaps feature some of BMC's other sets and accessories. Let's raise the roof. We uncover the contents and you'll notice everything is individually bagged. It's always exceptional packaging. Here we have the defensive structures. Then the figures are individually bagged. The Marines raising the flag actually come in this stiffer plastic. Now be advised, when you're opening this thing, don't simply yank them out. There's a small piece of tape that's actually holding the flag in and you could possibly damage it. So when you're taking this out, make sure you take that small piece of tape off of there. The turret on the M4 is reversed and when you look under the cannon, you can actually see a stiffer piece of plastic and that ensures that the cannon will remain intact during shipment. At the overview, we can confirm a total of 72 pieces, and these are assorted stances. Marines come in 12 different stances with two Marines per stance. That, of course, does not include our flag raisers. Then the Japanese Army comes in seven stances, with five of those stances consisting of four soldiers each, and the remaining two stances made up of two soldiers each. Charging onward to the inspection lineup, beginning with the Japanese, we have an impressive amount of detailing all around the figures. You'll even notice rifle slings, as seen here on the standing rifleman, along the forearm. Every figure possesses a blade on their left hip, as seen here on the mortarman. They are loaded with gear, familiar to what was actually used during the time period. All of that gear gives the figures depth and adds a bit of realism. The Marines took up the entirety of the observation platform. As with their Japanese adversaries, these Marines are laden with combat gear. The most iconic piece of equipment, perhaps, the M1 Grand. But that's not all. Around their waists, they bear cartridge belts that are lined with pouches intended to hold Grand and Springfield ammunition. On their backside, you see gear that they would have carried into combat in real life. Some of these guys carried up to 70 pounds worth of equipment. The Marines boast a greater diversity of weaponry at their disposal, such as the flamethrower and the bazookaman. As the grenade-wielding Marine comes into view, you can see the rifle sling prominently displayed. The stance and his facial expression is absolutely gorgeous. The Marines feature three different types of prone stances. This guy in particular is the most unique out of any set I've ever seen as he's laying on his side, looks like he's about to reload his weapon there. You see his elbow sticking way up in the air. Now in modern training, they teach you to lie flat as you reload. The other two are, are more common types. You have a guy looking down his sights and then we have a couple of guys that are crawling forward. And you can actually see their rifle slings too. You know, 
After I reviewed the BMC D-Day Invasion of Normandy set, I absolutely hated the U.S. soldiers on that. And that goes for the German soldiers as well. They just looked so ridiculous. The helmets were disproportionate. The stances were lazy. Now, the British guys, they were fine. I don't have any issues with the British guys. But then you guys started to comment that I should review the Iwo Jima set and that the Marines in this set look so much better. And you guys were not lying. These guys look amazing. Everything is much more proportionate. The helmet's better. The helmet's fits better, number one. The gear is better defined. The stances are a lot more aggressive. Virtually everything about these Marines are so much better than their army counterparts. I think if the Marines are accused of eating crayons, these guys are part of the, in the army uh, D-Day invasion of Normandy set. They must have been sipping lighter fluid or something. So I mentioned the Grenadier earlier here. Uh, this guy just looks phenomenal. You see here, his, see his gear belt there. You can see the sling of his rifle coming out. And he's holding a grenade, a clearly defined grenade in his hand. This stance is an iconic army man stance right here. These guys did an excellent job. Then we take a look at the bazooka man. He's taking an aggressive stance. Looks like he's about to fire. The bazooka is detachable, and I'm not sure why they did that. But needless to say, it will come off, and it'll go back on. It's kind of finicky, so when you get it set, you don't want to move it around too much, or that thing will fall back out. Then we have the radio operator, or the RTO. This guy's got a heavy-looking radio on his back and an antenna going way up. So if he's hiding behind a rock, you're definitely going to see that little antenna. Um, I like to think that he's maybe one of the code talkers uh, from the Navajo Nation. Those guys saved a lot of lives, and they were critical in winning that war. Now, we have the Japanese flag bearer. Can anyone in the comment section tell me what is written on that flag? out of general curiosity. The rest of the Japanese army in here, they feature all the iconic gear from the helmet to the hat. There's knives on their sides. Very well defined in terms of their gear. Here you can see a rifle sling on the left forearm of this guy. As far as the Japanese side goes, this is the only guy that is standing. Everyone else is either in a kneeling or prone position. We have the Japanese gunner. That to me looks like a Type 96 machine gun there. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then of course, before we move on, we're gonna take a look at the American flag raisers here. We have six Marines that are hoisting the flag. And that was in that iconic photograph captured so many years ago. One interesting note here is that the stars on the flag are numbered 48. That is representative of the time as there was only 48 states in the Union. Being a nerd for plastic army men slash marines here, I love how they captured the moment using plastic. This piece isn't going back in the box when we're done here. That's This is going to be on display in the war room. So it looks like their feet are either glued or melted on into place. So when you go back to the top side, they stay on very well, very sturdy. Now on to the vehicles. Here we have the LVT Amtrak and the M4 Sherman. Beginning with the Amtrak, we see that it can hold up to four Marines fairly comfortably, and it's also bristling with machine guns, 50 cal up front, along with 30 caliber machine guns on the left and right. Prominently displayed on all sides is the bright white stars, along with the American flag on either side. So the side profile will get a better picture. We have a broad underbody that resembles a boat, which it was an amphibious craft. And then the top is pretty much flat and cut off. And one thing to note is that the machine guns come in separate bags. You'll find them in the box, but if you pull it out and initially see that the machine guns are missing, don't be alarmed. They're in a separate baggie and you have to set them in place. They'll actually rotate 360 degrees, but of course you want to be wary of not flagging the people inside the boat. I mean, unless they're being really annoying. And then the floor inside also features a little bit of texturing as well. The bottom has a good textured finish. The treads go all the way around. You can see little indentions in the treads and it makes it much more realistic. You know what time it is. Will it float? Spectators have gathered to determine whether or not the Amtrak will float. Three, two, one, drop. Ooh, uh, we see it tilt to the front just a little bit, but it remains buoyant. Now, let's see how it handles a few love taps. All right, doing pretty good in the wavy conditions also. All right, 
Now let's try to push it down. Ooh, look at that, pops right back up consistently too. So it's a proven fact, this thing will float. After sitting overnight, the stickers eventually dried out, although I'm not sure how many times you can get them submerged. Metal screws are holding this thing together, so make sure you dry it out. Now we move on to the Sherman. This is what I would classify as a large tank in comparison to the soldiers, and that's based anecdotally off of many other sets. From the side here, you can see a little bit of texturing that covers the entirety of the unit. It's a very nice texture. Of course, you have the iconic profile of the M4 Sherman. This is where the machine gun would have been at, and all around you have the bright white star featured, as well as the American flag on either side. We have indented treads all the way around, similar to the Amtrak there. Very nice. Solid underneath, you have screws holding this thing together. It, it's solid as a rock, it really is. Gas tanks on the back, and then we have plenty of detailing to go along the top. Now, these Shermans were developed in a, a, an array of variants. One of the variants used in the Pacific was the flamethrower tank. So this thing, you can pretend it's firing high explosive shells or spitting out fire. This is the dark green variant, and there is an olive drab variant. That one comes with the Invasion of Normandy set. You can also buy these individually, and I still can't determine which shade of green is my favorite. We now come to the props. BMC flags always stand high above everyone else. In addition to that, we have two barbed wire fence pieces, two rock formations, eight sandbag emplacements, and two mortars. We begin with the barbed wire fence pieces. Given their length, they can be used to cover wide areas to help delay advancing enemy forces. They're a little bit flexible and maintain their shape. The rocks feature detailing on all sides and provide a decent amount of cover for your kneeling units, but they're probably best suited for your prone units. The sandbag formations feature a decent amount of detail. You can see they're stacked on top of each other. I think the best way to use these is with your prone units as kneeling units can be a little bit overexposed. And then we have the two mortars. There aren't any molds specifically using the mortar, but they are present and you can use them on either side. Then we take a look at the flags. Here is the rising sun flag. This one is in particular for the army because it's situated in the center. The rising sun flag that's offset a little bit is actually represents the Navy. Now we'll take a look at the American flag. This one too maintains the 48 stars. Again, small things like that really go a long way in keeping with the realism, the accuracy of the time. Of course, the base pops on and off and it is very sturdy. Now on to the biggest prop of all, Mount Suribachi. The base is comprised of two separate halves with one small piece covering the tunnels above and then an additional piece featuring the Americans raising the flag. It being this gray color and the texture of it kind of reminds me of some type of a, of a moon service. With the stickers set in place, we take a look inside and we can see narrow crevices and small hallways. And it was reported that weeks after the raising of the flag, Japanese defenders were still in the tunnels putting up resistance. Many of these tunnels eventually became tombs. This is BMC's Iwo Jima playset. And as I said before, this is one of the coolest sets that I've ever seen. And pulling that box out, seeing how huge the box was, I got really excited. It almost felt like a kid again. Guys, I had a lot of fun reviewing this. Thank you so much for suggesting it. And if you enjoyed this review, please like, comment, and subscribe. And by the way, guys, if you want to invest in the channel, I not only have a Patreon account, but I also have two more accounts where you can get some really cool artwork by me. Those are on Displate.com and Redbubble.com. Just search for my name, Bill Greenwater. Those purchases help support the channel, and you get a little something in return. For Call of Plastic, I'm Bill Greenwater, and we'll see you soon.